I wanna say thank you to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes. They have everything from dance lessons to business building, art, nutrition, and everything in between. It's made especially for learning. You don't have to deal with any advertisements. You can focus on what you're actually trying to learn. I love it even for homeschool. I checked out the Video for Instagram course by Halise. I like it because she teaches you how to create an engaging story in less than one minute, which as a content creator on YouTube, I create long form content. So being able to see how someone is able to create an engaging story in less than a minute is something that I was interested in learning. She goes through finding inspiration, picking a theme, how to make it interesting and quick with jump cuts, and some of the tech side. Skillshare also allows you to connect with other classmates through their online community so that you're not just learning alone. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below and receive a one month free trial of Skillshare to test out the classes and start exploring your creativity today. All right, let me get my little block. Oh, she gets ready too. The cactus? Mm -hmm. this is I didn't know she did. I guess you can see some tickling when she was here. Try to decide? Yes. You can squeeze a little bit. It's like I need to come this way though or I'm not gonna get it in the bucket. It was clean with a rag? Yeah, it's clean with a rag. Really, I clean really well on her. Or four others. I feel like we need a wider bucket if we're really wanting to milk four at once. Like, honestly, why not just like a five gallon bucket? Like a food grade five gallon bucket. Because you're more likely to step on it or she's more likely to step on it. Yeah. Maybe like, well, those coconut oil things aren't any higher or wider at the top, are they? No, they're smaller. Because we miss a lot. You gotta get better shots. I'm getting mine, well, sometimes. I always don't, I never miss whenever I'm using one hand. But they're, you know, they face different ways because I'm assuming if these back ones didn't face forward, the calf could never access them. I think I'm, I've got this side just about milked out. I got it on mine on the milked out too. So I'm gonna empty it out. Okay, well here, let me, let me empty it. Cause I don't wanna lose any. Or no, what are you doing little kitty? Look in my milk jar. Her foot caught the 
girl. No, I just meant like, I can probably let her go. Oh. She's liking that. Yeah, she likes all kinds of things. Quick little garden tour. Obviously have corn right here. Herb bed's still doing well. I've been picking a lot of basil. And then I planted some seeds, so I believe if the bugs don't eat them, I have some various basil seedlings throughout here. Parsley, sage, <laughs> I have the cucumbers. I'm trying to encourage them here to grow up this. So each day whenever I come out, like right now, I'm going to do this. This one's trying to not grow this way. Just going to Kind of when I'm not one-handed, just wrap it around and then it'll start to grab on with these. You can't really force it, but if you set it there, it will do it like it did over here. So these have been established and they're successfully growing up. This one's grabbed on right here. But each time you kind of have to encourage them. They won't do it naturally. All right, this turned into a watermelon bed. It did have greens over here, but then those were in their course. And so what I've been doing is we only had them planted over there. I've been moving like this, this vine, for example, them this way, because they just want to go every which way. And so if you gently move them, they are starting, I've been moving them all this way. They are all mostly, and now this one popped out. It's probably too late to move it without damaging it, but I am encouraging this bed to fill up with watermelon. Now I let my tomatoes get away from me. Last year I cut off all of the, I forget the name for it now, but you cut off, you prune them back and you don't let them turn into this jungle. Cause here's my two tomato beds here and here, and yes, they're a jungle, but there are lots and lots of tomatoes. This one's um, trying to become red. Here's one. I pulled off several red ones, um, and they're really going to be going strong soon. But yeah, it's a real jungle. And then I got my zucchini over here, which I've done a terrible job of encouraging them up 
I think I have one working its way up, but I've missed most of them. So this one is exiting the bed. And most of them are. I'm still gonna try though, because there are a few that I can still work up my French tutor here. Peppers are doing well. And then what I'm most excited about is my flowers. Now this is the wonderful time of year where the weeding battle is mostly over because the plants are all so large that they crowd it all out. So this was hard to keep weeded and now it's pretty much just a nice flower bed, very few weeds. This one I could definitely give some attention to, but even without, you're not allowed in here, kitty. No kitties in the garden. But even without, the flowers are pretty much taking over at this point. I could probably weed around here, but every time I try to weed around these cosmos, these little delicate ones, I almost always pull a few out no matter how careful I'm being because they're just kind of tender. I do have some large ones here, which is great. And I need to put in some more bricks for the path because this right here is actually just supposed to be a path through. And then this one, I have a path here too, but it's pretty overtaken, but I still could get through and weed if I needed to. And then this bed over here, I never finished planting. I planted some beans. How did you get in here? on this side and then this side I never planted and a volunteer tomato sprung up and since I didn't get to it I just weeded around it and threw a thing on it a uh, little whatever you call this cage and so I guess I'm gonna grow one random tomato plant here just simply because I didn't plant it and there it was all right kitty you're getting out of here find the calf but I saw some weeds moving so I know she's with her mother and they're just exploring and finding stuff to eat stinkers so the goats had a nice new spot and then we find them over in the chicken area which means that they got out of their nice new spot and somehow got under the chicken coop, which is why goats are really annoying. And their whole purpose at this point, since I'm not going to be milking them anymore, is to clear the woods. And so we're, we have all the woods fenced in, but we're going to segment it off because I'm told that goats will just simply pick and choose what they like the best. They won't clear anything unless you section them off. And they escaped, of course instantly and so now we have to deal with figuring out why but if i can't figure that out we will eventually just get rid of them because i really had my hopes on them clearing these woods but they are quite the escape artist i find that cows so far uh, i've milked for at the time of this video coming out or the time of recording i meant i've already milked for an entire week and they're easier to milk you get more milk uh, they're easier to contain and so I don't know we're gonna see what the goats how they'll end up working on this little homestead but at the moment they're just a little annoying there she goes underneath the chicken wire Blair you are so frustrating now Luke has to tighten this whole coop better so we have a project today. 
Ugh, you guys are the worst. Seriously. You're the worst, Blair. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, you're messing it all up. Micah and Danny, I need your help getting chickens because you guys, they, they catch chickens easier than me. I think it's because the chickens aren't as afraid of them. Danny, you can do that? They catch them so easy. Yeah, so that hole loops down. It's all sagged. I don't know if they still would risk it due to getting shot. Yeah, I don't know how bad that shock is to them. But yeah, where, where do they go right there underneath that one? Yeah, I watched it. <laughs> what I was thinking is I'll just loop it back to this. I yes, for that. I pretty much redo it all. I mean, they could let a little out, pull, 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 pull. How did they get that so loose like that? Egg on an egg, hmm. but an egg. The goats, like that part. Mommy's that one, it might just be, I'm gonna make it there. Is there? Okay, well, we'll go get eggs in a little bit. Yet? We're gonna figure our animals all back out and get them all back where they go. All squared away. Now, as far as fixing the chicken run, what are you gonna do? Retighten uh, or just uh, put in some of those staple thingies? Because I think the staples would work without goats messing it up. Yeah, need some heavier ones, big ones, like rebar. Where do you find such a thing? Pretty much thin them. Chicken! Them oh. Get some rebar. Chicken! And bend them on. Chicken! Chicken! Why are you guys acting like this is the first time we put you in here? <laughs> We put you in here two days ago and you weren't interested and now you're going to town, so maybe this will help. Now we feel like if we clear this line all the way this way with the house being over here, you'll see our lovely play area back here, but with the house there, this might help with bugs and it's just too grown up. And we're hoping these goats We'll enjoy this without having to weed eat our entire woods. We put the goats in here a few days ago. This was all overgrown with poison ivy. You can see concrete now, so that's good. You guys are slacking on the job. It is pretty warm today. Luke, did you mow down this center? Yeah. Okay. Oh man, they're doing next to nothing then. Luke is cleaning out the stall because we got our animals all where they're supposed to finally be, which is on pasture, in the woods, the chickens have their own spot, and so we're thoroughly cleaning it, so we took everything down and we're gonna like get everything out of there. How's it going? Oh good. Just, just you moved the cattle panel and getting in there. Hmm? You moved the cattle panel and really getting in there. Yeah. Cool. These these type of tea posts are so, much so sticky. Oh. They bend. They maybe like they would bend, but hey, you can't hardly get them out of the ground. You mean that in a good way, right? Uh, they, yeah, can't get them out. This when is, I got to digging on it. This makes way more uh, sense than uh, shoveling uh, it one by one. What would make the most sense is having a front loader. Yeah. Bucket tra or a well, yeah. tractor. Now we're going to make some dinner. I have some leftover pesto, so I'm going to make up some more einkorn gnocchi and just do like a chicken gnocchi pesto thingy. And then Johanna is making up some einkorn brownies. Jordan, you're making me nervous. No. <laughs> no. Well, why did you carry it like that? Thank you for you. It was on the wood, not on the pile.
Now I'm just deglazing this pan with a little bit of white wine. And I'm going to cook up the mushrooms. 